Hey guys, welcome to Source Bread. <laughs> this is Today in History. I just, uh, crushed me. This is gonna be a good one. Today in History. On October 3rd, 1863, President Lincoln declared the last Thursday in November as Thanksgiving Day. In 1926, Violet Percy became the first British woman to officially complete a marathon. I hope she didn't turn Violet when she finished the race, cause, <clears throat> Willy Wonka. And in 1995, former football star O.J. Simpson is found not guilty for the murder of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown. And the first buffalo wings are made at the Anchor Bar in Buffalo, New York in 1964. Delicious. But more importantly, on October 3rd, 1955, the Mickey Mouse Club debuted on ABC. And being a big Disney fan, this is an awesome slice of Disney and television history for me, personally. And this was obviously way before the Britney Spears days when times were simple and television was cheesy as hell. The Mickey Mouse Club was a clever marketing tool used to finance and promote Walt's Disneyland Park, which opened just three months before the show debuted. And what was the Mickey Mouse Club, you ask? Well, it was basically a variety show for kids with a newsreel, cartoons, serials, music, comedy, all that stuff. The kind of comedy with jokes like this. Hey, did you hear about the old fire at the circus, Billy? I sure did. It was intense. <laughs> the 50s. The show taught all sorts of valuable life lessons to kids who faced the hardships of growing up in the 1950s, like, like uh, what to do about lice, or if you grew sideburns, you were a juvenile delinquent. And of course, the Mickey Mouse Club show featured the mouse himself in every single episode, and not just in the form of the short cartoons that originally ran in the theaters before movies. He'd show up in the opening, interstitials, and the closing segments, all that stuff. And that's back when old Walt Disney did the voice himself. Yeah, that's right, Walt Disney did the voice of Mickey Mouse. Did I blow your mind? No? The regular host of the show was head Mouseketeer Jimmy Dodd, who provided the leadership role in the club. He would often show up and encourage young viewers to make the right moral choices in life and all that stuff. But the most popular Mouseketeer ever was fan favorite Annette Funicello. Ooh, what a dreamboat. She went off to star in all sorts of Disney stuff, like the Zorro TV series, the Shaggy Dog movie, Babes in Toyland, The Monkey's Uncle. Uh-huh, she loves a monkey's uncle, yeah, yeah. She loves a monkey's uncle, whoa, whoa. The Mickey Mouse Club survived four seasons before it was canceled due to the high profit margins for merchandise sales and because the sponsors were uninterested in educational programming for children. Yeah, isn't that crazy? ABC also refused to let Disney air the show on any other network, to which Walt was like, no way, dude, I'm gonna sue you, ABC, and won damages, but had to agree that both the Mickey Mouse Club and Zorro could not be aired on any major network. Which left the wonderful world of Disney another TV show as the only Disney series left on primetime television until 1972. But then Disney was all like, you know what? We should just buy ABC. We're made of money, right? Then we could do whatever we want with our old shows. So they did just that in 1996. But then there was a reboot of the series which starred Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, Ryan Gosling, and Justin Timberlake. But nobody knows who those guys are. And that was today in history. When you wish upon, what, we'll be sued if I, okay. Magic, happy birthday. Ow.